Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this video, we're going to learn more about working with collections of data. Now, in the previous video, I demonstrated how you can add references to objects into a special type called a collection that will then manage all of those references. So it'll keep track of them all and we can then iterate through them or access a single one. Better than arrays because we can add and remove, gives us new functionality like being able to not just index into uh, to uh, find a particular item, but also in some cases like the dictionary, able to use a key in order to get at the value. All right, so all those good things we learned about in the previous video. But what else can you do with collections of data uh, besides just index in or loop through them? Well, suppose that you needed to filter a, a list of say a thousand items in a collection and only work with a subset that meet a specific criteria. So this is made possible through a relatively new innovation that was added back in C Sharp 3.0 called Link to Objects. And so in this lesson what I want to do is explain the rationale behind Link and then provide a few examples to get you started with working with Link in your applications filtering large collections of data. So I have open now uh, Microsoft SQL Server, which is a database product from Microsoft. Uh, if you're familiar with relational databases uh, and querying the data in a table using structured query language, or SQL, some people call it just SQL, then you'll undoubt undoubtedly be familiar with selecting data from a database table like this. and I'm going to hit the execute button and you can see this will bring back all the rows of data in my customers table so I'm selecting all columns from the customers table now I could filter this down and only select for example several specific columns so that's one way that I can filter the data let me go ahead and try a different way here. Let me find all of those customers that have a credit limit in excess of $1,900 or $19,000 rather. All right, so as you can see here in the results near the bottom right hand corner, that that filters this particular table's data from 1,000 rows down to 97 that meet that criteria. I can further limit the data that's brought back by adding additional where clauses. So and customer since is greater than January 1st of 2009 at midnight is implied. Okay, that filters it down to 26 rows. And then I can even filter it further since I'm going to be a salesperson in Illinois. I want to find those that have a high credit limit and are relatively new customers in Illinois so I can pay them a visit and that limits it to just two results okay so when you think about it working with a set of rows that are stored in a table like we just did here for a moment uh, is similar to working with a sequence or a set of objects that are stored in a collection they're similar concepts so some smart people at Microsoft asked well why can't we use a, a syntax that's similar to this very simple SQL syntax in order to query objects in our collections and that's exactly what they came up with uh, in the form of link uh, it allows developers to use a syntax that they're probably already familiar with in order to run queries against collections of objects so let me set up a project for us to to look at and learn more about link and to set up this project I have a before snapshot of a project so I'm looking at the C9CS22 folder the before folder I'm gonna copy this and if you want to follow along you should do the same thing I'm gonna paste it here in my projects directory I'm gonna open it up and double click the solution file Okay, so you can see what we have is a, uh, a collection initializer of a number of new car objects and I've already set up all of their properties, initializing them to some values. Notice a few things about our car class that we're using. Has a make model 
that are strings, a year, which is integer, a sticker price, which is double, and then a color, and I've created a car color enumeration, okay? And then I'm simply just looping through to list all of the items within this short collection now. Again, I just took a few moments to create a few items. You could make this list much, much longer and further practice with, uh, with Link. So let's do something very simple to start off. I'm gonna remove this little line that says, we'll add code here, and let's go ahead and add some code. So what I wanna do is write a link statement that will retrieve uh, all of the BMWs from this list, and that looks like I have three here. So I'm gonna use that var keyword for now, BMWs equals from car in my cars, where car.make equals BMW select car. Now I'm going to replace my cars with BMWs. And now I'm going to run the application. And you can see now we have a subset of our large list by performing link uh, a link operation on that large collection to to filter it to just those that meet our criteria so if we wanted to add an additional criteria maybe we could find only those that are both BMW and the year is 2010 and you can see we have one that matches that criteria all right, so I can use any identifier here. I just use the word car because it's kind of similar to what you see down here below where it's one instance in a larger collection. The same thing is true here. So one instance in a larger collection. Evaluate each instance against its year and its make in this particular case and then select that instance adding it to our new collection. Okay, so that's roughly what the syntax is accomplishing here. All right, now, as I demonstrated when we were looking at the SQL syntax, I was able to uh, not only filter by the number of rows, but I was also able to filter uh, the columns as well. And you can do that through a process that's called projection. So in order to do that, we'll create a new data type. And the reason why you might wanna do that is because while an object may have um, uh, dozens of potential properties that have been defined, you may want to select only a subset of those and work with just a few in order to conserve memory or just to and generally uh, make it less uh, unwieldy. Okay, uh, so let's create another link statement here. Var new cars equals from cars in, whoops, from car in my cars, or car.year is greater than 2009 and I don't have to use a where clause I just chose to do that so now instead of selecting just car I'm gonna project out a new uh, set of columns now or or rather um, a set of properties now when I do that the type that's returned is no longer a car it started as a car but now it has fewer properties than a car it's a new type it's a type that's created on the fly. It's, it doesn't have a name, it's anonymous. It's a new anonymous data type, okay? Don't worry about anonymous data types too much. However, I will say this, that's why we use the var keyword. We're gonna let the c -sharp compiler figure out what the data type should be. We're not giving it a name. We'll let the c -sharp compiler figure out what its name should be, okay? And we'll see that in just a moment, how that's manifested. So select new uh, car dot make car dot model and car dot year and then we'll just change this from BMWs to new cars. Now let's run the application. You can see we're looking for all of those cars that are greater that where the year is greater than two thousand nine. So we just have two 
results. What's more interesting about this example, however, is if we were to place a breakpoint, oh, let's say right there, and then run this application, let's look at the data type for car. If I were to hover my mouse cursor over, first of it's pretty easy, it, it looks pretty neat. It gives us um, the car object and the current one and all of its properties. You can see it only has three properties, make, model, and year. All the rest of them have been, uh, have been ignored. Look over here in their locals window. If you look at the value, and as I hover my mouse cursor over it, you can see that we are working with new cars, which is of type system.link.enumerable dot where select list iterator of type understand link dot car and then kind of buried in there is that anonymous type we have created a new type without a name so it's anonymous that has both a string a string and an integer as a part of its definition in other words the make the model in the year okay so don't worry too much about that other than to just understand that is really the the true value of the var is to uh, resolve at runtime the uh, the shape of a new class that would be difficult for us to ascertain ahead of time all right it's created dynamically all right so Additionally, we can do things like sorting from uh, the newest car to the oldest car. So let's go again here. We'll call this ordered cars equals equals from car in my cars. Order by car dot year select car. Now I intentionally left something off so we can see how this works. So I'm going to call this ordered cars and now let's get rid of that and let's run the application and you can see we are not going from oldest to newest or I'm sorry from a newest uh, to oldest we're going from oldest to newest so how do we change this sort order well we change it using descending keyword so order by car dot your descending so by using that we'll go from the newest to the oldest in our list okay now, in addition to this SQL-like syntax, you can accomplish some of the same things using another version of this called the method syntax. So I'm going to do uh, create a version of this query using a more method-based syntax, something that might be more familiar to you up to this point. underscore BMWs and let's run the application and then I'll come back and talk about the syntax okay we get the same results we got before so we're able to use again a method a methodized version <laughs> uh, where we're calling a where clause and then we're chaining together another where clause and we can continue to chain together different clauses to sort to filter to order things of that nature until we uh, are able to find and filter just the data that we're looking for um, so the syntax is given a car return cars that meet this criteria given the fact that we're working with cars just like here like this from car and cars find those cars where the make is BMW okay so let's go on and do one more and look at ordered cars equals my cars dot order by descending and I'm gonna use a different identifier and you'll see often just a single letter like the letter P or T or O or something like that the same thing is true that it doesn't matter what you call it it's just a convention that they've come up with. So we'll see that often in examples. And so then let's go ordered cars. And we get the same results where it's ordered from the, uh, the newest to the oldest. Okay. Now one other thing that you can do that's kind of neat, let's move down here, is that there are other... Um, 
uh, methods that are available to your collections as well. And it's a slightly different type of functionality that's available, but I'm just going to go ahead and lump it in with what we're working on here. You can get a sum. So given a car, give me the, a sum of the all the cars sticker price and then console dot whoops console dot right line inside here we're gonna go total inventory value and then we're gonna use our string formatting syntax to get a currency value and uh, we'll give it the sum all right so let's run our application now and you can see our total inventory value from all of our cars is two hundred fifty thousand dollars Okay, so I realize that some of this syntax might look foreign. I hope I took the time to explain it and at least you can understand the basics of what we're trying to get at, even if you can't just off the top of your head now redo this whole lesson and you haven't just memorized it, okay? Uh, hopefully it makes sense. The thought process and what you can accomplish by using link queries within C Sharp. Again, kind of a new concept, but you'll see it often as you look at examples on MSDN and over the internet. All right, so we're just about ready to wrap up with the next lesson. We'll see you then. Thank you.